All righty, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Manny Quinones, and I am proud to be here with all of you guys. You guys have definitely taken the first step to learning how to trade with us. This is our very first Forex Mentorship Session 1. What we're going to help do for you guys now is we're going to help you guys learn how to tie together all the information that you learn about Forex. Forex, if it's one thing, is an ocean. It's an ocean with millions of waves. And you can learn so many different things on so many different levels and still not know one thing. It's amazing. So what we want to do is we want to centralize all the information for you guys. And we want to be able to drive it home. We want to be able to give it to you guys so you guys can piece it together piece by piece by piece and knit together a nice blanket. That way you guys can start catching pips with us over here in the market. I'm so, so excited to share this information with you. How we're going to start this session, all right, our session one, we're going to be going over a couple of key things to understand how to trade Forex. The first thing we're going to go over is what's known as market structure. I hope you guys have a pen and paper handy, okay? First thing that we're guys going to go over is known as market structure. Market structure, what you see here is these series of waves moving up and down, all right? There's a method to the madness. All these up and down motions actually create patterns and structure within the market. And we're going to teach you how to see it so that way you can start becoming a more profitable trader. The second thing we're going to go over is understanding support and resistance lines and knowing what your trading zone is. Showing that when you're within a top and bottom support and resistance area, we're going to show you how to identify your trading zones. So you guys know how to trade. All right. The next thing moving forward, um, we're going to show you guys highs and lows and how to create trends in the market. We're going to show you when market structure breaks and we start descending into a downtrend. We're going to show you guys how to understand that this is a downtrend and how to capitalize and trade on this downtrend. All right. And at the end of all of this, what we're going to do is we're going to have you guys study and internalize all the information and learn it. So the only thing that I'm gonna want you guys to learn this entire week is what we're going to be going over today. So that way, once we go to session two, we can move on to more advanced things. So if you do not understand everything from session one, it's going to be impossible for you to keep up with session two. So we're gonna start this off. All right, let's take a nice look at these charts. We're going to back this up and we're going to erase everything that you see here. All right, let me get my let me get my handy dandy keyboard over here so I can get my delete button. Okay, we're going to get rid of this Elliott wave. We're going to get rid of this W. Our legs here. Okay, we're going to get rid of this downtrend. We're going to get rid of this uh, these Fibonacci ratios here. Okay, we're going to get rid of this Elliott wave. We're going to get rid of this head and shoulders pattern. I'm going to get rid of all these support and resistance that we see here. Okay. And here we go. All right, let's move over. Let's come right over here. All righty. Open these charts up for you guys. Very good. All right, first thing that, that I want you guys to understand. All right, first, first key thing I want you guys to understand. There are different type of trading styles. In session two, we're going to go over the type of trading styles and, and the type of traders that you are. It's a lot of valuable information, but right now we have a lot of people who need to understand the basics. So we're going to go over a couple of key things. It's imperative that you guys know this so you guys can henceforth understand trading styles moving forward. So we will cover that in week's two topic. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is understanding market structure. Okay, and we'll start with very, very basic support and resistance meaning when you guys are looking at the charts here okay you'll see a series of of high movements and low movements high movements and low movements high movements and low movements and we can see that this is in an uptrend we can see that the market is pushing up so obviously we want to look for buying opportunities if you come over here we see that the market is obviously in the downtrend the market's coming down right and we're looking for selling opportunities now what we have right here in the middle this is known as consolidation right here in the middle. The market moves three ways. The market moves up, the market moves sideways, and then the market moves down. That's the only three ways 
that the market moves. Now, when the market is moving sideways, right, what this is known as, this consolidation, from my experience, has been known to represent indecision in the market, more like a stopping platform where the traders are trying to figure out what's going on, where they're looking for the next move in the market. One thing that you guys are going to understand is that Forex tells a story. Every movement is the direct results. I want you guys to understand this. Every movement is the direct result of the last movement. Every movement is the result, direct result of the last movement in the market. Forex tells a story and you guys can mark up your charts and you guys can follow the story all the way through to the current point in time. So that way, once you get here, you guys can understand with better clarity where the market is projecting to move based on your own bias and analysis moving forward. Now, the only thing that disrupts this, okay, is when the market makers come in and then they move the markets around with news with incredible force. And you guys will see long candles like this. I want you guys to understand this. When you guys see these long, long candles like this, all right, and we have this long wick meaning that it pushed all the way down right here. For those of you that don't know, this is a candle, right? Obviously the candle represents where price opened and where price closed. When you see the wicks, which are all these little lines, this means that the wicks also tell a story. This is mean that this candle at one point pushed all the way down here to this low, low, low point, but the sellers could not hold it. All right. The market could not hold it. So it ended up retracing and pulled back up and the candle closed here. That's why everywhere where the candle closes, the next one opens. Where the candle closed, the next one open. Where the candle closed, the next one open. Where the candle closed, the next one open. Then we seem to push up. And it does this back and forth at every single increment in price moving forward. Now, when you guys see this, these long candles, this is the market maker. These are the banks, the large corporate head funds, guys. I want you to understand that 95% of the money in the Forex market is owned by private banks. We as retail traders who trade on an everyday basis, who help push this market around, we only have, we only control 5% of the money within the market. Yet we still stand to make millions and millions and millions of dollars on a daily and monthly basis. Like that's how much the average person is cashing out. Not the average person, but that's how much, you know, in unity that the Forex market is cashing out and delivering to everyday people known as retail traders, which are us doing this, catching pips and movements within the market. When you see this, this is a very irregular movement. This is a bank movement. So when you guys see this, this is something we're gonna teach you guys in the future, how to trade supply and demand, all right? So going back, <clears throat> let's go all the way back to where we started and we're gonna get started with this. Okay, so when price comes up, after price comes up, and then price starts ranging, and it just goes up and down, up and down, all right? This is known as consolidation or indecision in the market. And what you guys wanna do is you guys wanna learn how to mark this up. So what you're gonna do is you guys are gonna get horizontal lines, and you're gonna place them right at the top. I want you guys to look at this right here. We could put this right up here, okay? Look at this on my charts here, okay? We see the market over here pushed up, and we've seen a little drawback right here. It respected this price level, pulled down before it broke back through and then retested the same support level and then pushed all the way back up to the high before the market makers broke it all the way down. And as you see, once it broke down, the candle closed and it reopened right below this support and resistance line that we have here. And as you see, it looks like a ceiling. This top line is known as, res this top line is known as resistance. And I want you guys to look at this, this trading zone as your room. The resistance is known as the ceiling, where every time you jump up to hit the ceiling, you, you hit the ceiling and then you fall back down. It's like, it's like a ceiling wall. You can't break through it. And price will push back up and hit it and fall back down. And the more price is hitting the wall, the more it's chipping away at the wall and then making it where you can break through the wall. So I want you guys to see this. So this is known as the resistance, the top part. How you find support and resistance is by connecting where the majority of the levels um, connect, where the majority of the price connects and respects. So as you see here, we have respect here, respect here, and then these are the highest points. We have two high points here, right here within the market. So this is our resistance right here. Next thing we're gonna do, 
Okay, without resistance, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this up for you guys. All right, next thing we're gonna, we're gonna look at support. The support is the floor. Now you see the support is a little different than what we have over here, right? So if we push it forward, right, we'll keep it right here. This is gonna be a good support line for the company. Now there's different types of support and resistance that you have, okay? Now we're just gonna go with very basic support. And the reason why we're looking at this as support is because this is where we've seen the touches. We see the breakout and the retest. We see the market pushed up, failed, hit this shot up. We see the market came whipped, created the very, very first support, came up, market makers came, broke through this. This is known as a fake out, and the market came back in, right? Here's another chutch, here's another chutch, here's another chutch, here's another chutch, here's where the candle closes. So this is serving as a nice support line within the, within the market. And you can know your support and resistance by how many touches you get at the bottom of the consolidation and at the top of the consolidation. It's very, very basic. So if you guys look here, we have the uptrend, we have the consolidation, and then we have the downtrend. It's just very easy to see that we're just, market, we're just boxing the price. That's all support and resistance is. It's just learning what your trading zone is. All right? Within your support and resistance, all the movement here, Okay, this is known as your trading zone. I want you guys to write this down. Price will trade within the trading zone 70% of the time. Okay, price will trade within the trading zone 70% of the time. Meaning where you have your support and where you have your resistance, for 70% of the time, price will stay right in the middle and just go up and down, up and down, up and down. And obviously the goal is to sell when it's high and buy when it's low. Sell when it's high and buy when it's low so you guys can make your pips trading the consolidation here. Now right off back, I will tell you this, I do not recommend that you guys trade consolidation until you guys understand it because consolidation is also known as a continuation pattern, okay? Consolidation is also representative, representative as indecision or in the market, meaning that traders don't know what to do. So the market's going up, the market's going down, the market's going up, the market's going down, and you don't know overall what's really going on with the price. So you guys can come in and scalp and get in some quick trades and make money, okay? But ultimately, you also stand to lose money because if you see here, if you're not getting in at the right points in time, you're gonna get entrapped in your price and you're gonna be holding these prices, you're gonna be holding those trades for hours and hours if you get within the trade. A golden rule and a key rule to getting into a good profitable trade, a good sign of knowing it, okay? I want you guys to write this down too. If you're not within significant profit within the first two hours of your trade, okay? If you're not in significant profit within the first two hours of your trade, you did not enter the trade at the right time, okay? You should be able to go immediately 15 pips into your profit, and from there, you want to be able to move your stop loss in profit. So that way you can protect your losses. Okay, if those of you who do not understand this, you will very, very soon. Make sure you guys are attending the IML Academy. Okay, so we have the support down here, which we have multiple hits, and we have the resistance over here. Now, the entire market consists of support and resistance, just looking at, you know, looking at it through a different perspective. Now, we're going to move forward. Okay. We're gonna show you guys what happens, okay? We're gonna show you guys what happens when market breaks out, okay? When market structure breaks. This is a market structure forming. So what we're looking for is we're looking for breakage in the market structure, so that way we know when to get back into the trade and get into a sell. So we're gonna show you guys how to identify market structure being broken and then going into downtrends and going into uptrends. The goal of trading, ladies and gentlemen, is to trade with the trend. The reason we're gonna go over market structure, support, resistance, and trends is so you guys can learn how to identify your trends and to get in on buying and selling opportunities on those trends using support and resistance confluence, using the market structure coming together. That's gonna to be your first goal, all right? So let's get into this and then we're going to explain how market structure broke out over here. Moving forward, this right here is known as a downtrend, okay? Many of you guys may know that. Some of you new guys may not. This is known as a downtrend. Downtrends and uptrends are consisted 
of what's known as highs and lows within the market. So if I can come over here and write this out for you, I will, right? We have what's known as a high. Okay, so we're gonna edit this text over here. We have known what's known as a high, okay? Thank you. This, we do this, let's duplicate this. And we're gonna edit this, and this is gonna be known as a low. Okay, let's do this, okay? So coming into the market here, all right, we see that price was within the consolidation zone, right? Trading within the consolidation zone. We're waiting for the market to break out of the consolidation zone so we can get into a nice trend. Is it gonna be an uptrend or downtrend? In this result, it was a downtrend. Another key thing I want you guys to write down is to trade with the trend, okay? The trend is your friend. Very, very, very important stuff here, okay? Because if you guys wanna be able to come in and get those big movements, catch those, capitalizing those big movements like we talked about, you guys want to get into, into trend trading, all right? Knowing when to sell and when to buy into trends. And they say to trade with the trend, meaning if the market is going down and we have a downtrend, you guys want to be able to look for selling opportunities in this downtrend coming over here. We're gonna show you guys how to get into selling opportunities in these downtrends right here so you guys can become a more profitable trader. So let's see what happens. We have the, the, the support line that we have over here, right? Now what happens is the price broke out of the market structure. Price broke out of this consolidation zone, broke out of this trading zone, price broke out and created what's known as a low. This is a low point. And I'm gonna give you guys a, an example here. Let me pull out my horizontal ray. Here, go, here it goes right here, okay? This right here is a low where the market broke out and it found a temporary, it found a temporary support. It came down, it hit a new floor where price couldn't break through and it was looking to break through even further. This is known as, a, as your next resistance, right? You had the top floor, you're breaking down to the next floor. So what it did was it created what's known as a low. And then from here, once it created a low, the market is gonna move up and it's gonna create a high, which is right here. This is the high point. So now we have a low where it, found support, uh, where it found support, and then it has the high where it found resistance. And if you guys see here, this is it's literally just like trading levels. So what was your previous support, once you break through it, now becomes your resistance. This is now your new ceiling, okay? Now to identify downtrends, we wanna look for very specific things, okay? Price created a high, now price came down, let me duplicate this for you guys over here again, okay? And then price created what's known as a lower low. So we're gonna do this here, lower low. Price created a lower low, this is in a downtrend. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and duplicate this. And here we go, now we found another support area, right here, another temporary support area, we found right over here. Price came down, you usually touch it by the first wick, Price came down, we found the next low point. This is known as the lower low. Now when price broke down into a lower low, price is gonna retrace, it's gonna go back up, right? Because you know the market's a series of movement. It goes down, it goes high, it goes down, it goes high. And what we're doing right now is we're teaching you guys how to understand market structure. Now when price broke low, price went up and created a high point, okay? This is known as a lower high, forgive me. This is known as a lower high. And then these just duplicate all the way down and we're gonna tie it all together for you. Okay, so let's do this. Now we have the next lower low right down here. Then you have the next lower low right down here. Okay, and you have lower highs. And you have your lower high right here and your lower high coming right over here. All right, so let's, let's show you guys this. Okay, lower low, okay, and lower high. Put this all together for you. I'm gonna put this all together for you guys in one minute. So look what happens here, okay? We're gonna make more support lines. And I want you guys to see how all of this connects together, okay? All righty. This is known as market structure. Right, when you guys are going to start creating a downtrend, what you guys are looking for is lower lows and lower highs to create a downtrend. And I want you guys to see how all of this comes together. All right, I'm gonna to put a downtrend 
and then we're gonna show you guys exactly how this was made. So I'm gonna get a segment over here for you guys. Okay, let me get a segment. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect all of the high points together, all of the high points right there. That's the, that's the money right here. So look what happened here, okay? We'll push this over so you guys can, can see these, uh, the text is just a little clearer, okay? All right, perfect. Look what happened here. I'm gonna make this invisible so you guys can't see it. This is invisible, right? This is a naked chart, as you guys see here. Now we have the chart marked up. And I want you guys to see how this starts making sense. When the market breaks out of market structure and it finds temporary resistance, it pushes up, creates a high. Then market is gonna push back down and it's gonna create the next low. So this is your first low point and now we're in a downtrend. So now the market is gonna shoot down even lower and find another floor to hit before it retraces. And this next floor is known as the lower low. Then it retraces back up and then makes a lower high. So this is the low, price retraces, pushes up, creates a high point. Price comes down, creates a lower low, and the reason why this is lower low is because this low point is lower than the previous low. So if this is lower, if this low point where the price came down to is lower than the previous low, that's why it's known as lower low. If you see here where the price pushed down, it, it, this low is lower than this low, so it's lower low. This point is lower than this point, so this is also a lower low, right? Just like this, so this is low points. Now when the market pushes up, it creates high points. So here goes the high, so we have a high, low push mark up to a high now this is known as a lower high because we're in a downtrend so the market's going low so we have high lower high lower low price retraces and creates another lower high now look how all of this pans together where we found our previous uh where we found our previous support when the market pushed down and it basically hit this wall that hit this support zone this hit this floor and it couldn't break through it started bouncing around a little bit and create the next point. Look what happens when the market hits the next low and pushes up. The support, right? The support became the resistance. The lower high respected the last level that it made right to the wick here. You see that? It respected from the first low point, it respected. You could push it down and range it down here. It's still respectable enough, right? But we're looking at the first wick, at the first low point. And it came and it respected. And you'll see these patterns continuing to develop so you'll see here when price pushed down and hit a new low over here by the first wick right and it pushed back up look what happened this little support became a resistance it came it pushed back up and these are where the trends are created you create a trend all right by connecting the lower high points in a in a downtrend all right so write this down a downtrend is consisted of lower lows and lower highs I'm going to repeat that again. A downtrend is consisted of lower lows and lower highs, okay? Now, how you connect the downtrend, okay? How you connect the downtrend is by hitting, is by connecting the high points. See, so once you have two connections, okay? Once you have two connections, you can start to create the downtrend, okay? But we're going to go here. This is the actual trend, okay? you start connecting the lower high points right here. So let's, let's, let's do this. This is high, this is low, there you go, okay? That's high, low, lower low, lower high. When you connect two high points together in a downtrend, two lower highs, when you connect two lower highs together, this is what starts a downtrend. And I'm gonna show you guys how to signify with, with market structure breakout, but I want you guys to understand how to create a downtrend so you guys are going to connect the two lower highs together and you can pull this all the way forward okay now we didn't know all of this happened in the market all we knew move this over all we knew if we look all the way here to the right if this was the market in real time all we knew is that the market started to create a downtrend we was in consolidation when price broke out and we started to see market structure forming and the market structure that we see forming were lower lows and lower highs. And we seen the start of a downtrend here. And we pulled it all the way, all the way down. And in time, it kept connecting. 
So two points, two low points, okay? Write this down. Two low points, start a trend, okay? Two connecting points, sorry. Two connecting points, start a trend. Three connecting points, confirm a trend, okay? Three connecting points, confirm a trend. You know without a shadow of a doubt that once the market hits this twice, the market is gonna return to test it a third time. At what point in time, you do not know but the market will come back to test it a third time to confirm if it's a valid trend or not. And then after that, it's gonna keep getting hits. And as it keep getting hits, it's showing how strong the trend is, but at the same time, I want you guys to look at this like your support. This is like, a, uh, like your resistance. If we look at the consolidation zone right here, where we have our support and our resistance, all you gotta do is basically just tilt this to the right. Tilt it 45 degrees to the right. And it's basically consolidation going sideways. You guys see that here? Okay, we're not gonna get into channels right now, but this is basically known as a price channel right here. We have our support, which is our floor for the Dow channel. And then we have the resistance for the Dow channel. So it's basically consolidation going sideways down in the market, okay? And after this, the more that it hits this ceiling, the easier it is for the price to break out and then to retest it and to shoot right back up. Okay, this is the very start of connecting all the dots together um, for trading. Now, this is basically everything I wanted to go over. We went over this very, very, very quickly, so I'm just gonna elaborate on it just a little more so everybody understands what's going on so that way we can start talking about market structure. Let's look at what happened going all the way over here. All right, or we'll do another example. Let's do an uptrend. This is going to be perfect, actually. We're going to do an uptrend right here. Okay. Now, at the bottom of the downtrend, because price is not going to come down forever, at one point in time, you're going to see a reversal in the trends. So now, as you guys see here that this was a downtrend, you guys can see here that the market broke out. And what did it do? Right? It broke out of the trend, right? Retested, broke out retested the previous support, right? Support becomes resistance. Retested that zone, and then the market took off, and then it retested the next zone. If you see here, look at how the lower lows in the downtrend, you guys see how these connecting points also become relevant in the future, how these become important points in time. They say that a good trader is a good detective. And you know good support and resistance levels by seeing how many hits you have a, at, a, at, a specific, at a specific pricing area. So you see there's a lot of hits here. There's a lot of hits, retraces, bounce, breaks, hits, retraces, comes back up, hits it, retraces, hits it, and there's a lot of connecting points here. So let's look at how the market started to create an uptrend. So at this lowest low point that we have all the way down here, look what ended up happening. Let's get rid of these, these lower low points. Okay, now. Let me get rid of this. Let's clear up this chart for you guys. Okay. Put this back. Okay. Please. <clears throat> now you guys can see here. So we have the downtrend coming here. And now what ends up happening that we have what's known as market structure being broken. So to continue the downtrend, we need to keep seeing Lower lows and lower highs, lower lows and lower highs, lower lows and lower highs, lower lows. And now, now we need to see lower high. But what ended up happening was the price ended up breaking out. We're going to go over week two, how to tell when the market is going to break out of a downtrend. What we want to do now is just show you guys how to identify market structure. Because with this powerful information alone, this is going to be the base setup for all your future trades and seeing exactly what's happening in the market. So look what happened here. Now the market started creating higher points. Let's rewrite these things down. Okay, let me get my text going again. Okay, so let's do this. We have our, we have our low point now, right? So this is our low point. Here we go here. Then what we did was we ended up creating a new high point. So here's our high, the market went back up to the high. Let's do this, high, 
okay? And an uptrend is going to be the complete opposite of a downtrend, okay? So what it's going to end up happening is that you're going to have, let's do this, okay? You're going to have higher low, okay? And let's duplicate this again. I'm going to write this down. And then we have a higher high, H-I-G-H. -H. Look at this, higher high. Okay. Higher low. Okay. And then we have higher high. And there we go. And now we're going to start looking at what creates an uptrend. So let's get another segment so that way we can start connecting the low points and make an uptrend here. So remember, two hits start the trend, three hits confirm the trend. Okay? So we can push this all the way up here. This is what's ended up happening. Okay, let's bring that together. There you go. All right. So in a downtrend, as we said here, we have low, lower low, lower high, lower low, uh, so lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, coming in a downtrend. Now, if you completely make this to the opposite, to make an uptrend, the uptrend needs higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so write that down. Uptrend, you need to see higher highs and higher lows meaning that the, the, the price is basically climbing. This is also known as a rally in the market. When you see a, sh like a, a nice uh, bullish movement pushing up, this is known as a rally. This is the market rallying, coming back up. You know, the market builds up slowly, and then when it drops, it drops faster. Okay, price falls 10 times faster than it builds up. Okay, so see here, low, price pushed up, created a high point came down, created a low, but now this is known as a higher low because we have low, then there's a higher low, then there's an even higher low. So as long as we're connecting the higher lows, we now know we are in an uptrend. And what you call these guys is this. Let's look over here. In a downtrend, to make a downtrend, write this down, what you need to do is you need to connect the lower high points to make a downtrend, okay? So you guys are going to, need to connect the lower highs. That's what you don't start a downtrend by connecting the bottom. That's an incorrect way to mark up your trends. It's very important that you guys focus and learn how to make the analysis, how to uh, make the price action on your chart. Because if you mark up your chart wrong, you're going to see price wrong, and then you're going to take and you're going to take an incorrect trade. So the proper way to take to create a downtrend is by connecting the lower high points. And what this does is this creates valleys in the market. So if you're walking along this long line or sliding down, look at this at the Grand Canyon. We have a huge valley right here, all right? You'll fall right into this valley coming down. You see that this, this creates valleys coming down. So that's the reason why you need to correct, connect the lower highs to make the downtrend. Now coming over here is the opposite like we said. To make an uptrend, okay, you guys need to connect the higher low points, okay? Because what this does is this creates what's known as the peaks, okay? So downtrends create valleys by connecting the lower highs, okay? I'm going to repeat that again. Downtrends create valleys by connecting the lower high points, okay? And uptrends create peaks. Look at these like mountains. Don't they look like, if you're walking along the nice Colorado coastline or whatever it is that they call it over there, and you see these big, beautiful mountains coming up. Big, beautiful mountains. These are known as the peaks above the uptrend. These are the peaks. And you, can, you make the uptrend by connecting the lower, by, by okay. okay, sorry about that. I just received the phone call. Okay, seems like that somebody has a issue. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Seems like somebody had a, had an issue with something. That was a brief.
brief technical difficulty. And you connect, you create the uptrends by connecting the higher lows. Now, I want you to see here, this is what's known as market structure being broken out, as, as we already recalled. So if you're coming down and you're making downtrends, where downtrends are hitting support and resistance levels over here, we're able to capitalize and make markets. So if I zoom out on this, suddenly this starts to make a sense. Suddenly we can see that the downtrend is done. It pushed up and created a high point and it broke out of this down channel. It broke right out of this and now it hit the, it hit the support, which was the previous support and resistance. It hit this and then the market started to push up. And that's all there is to it. So what I want you guys to do now moving forward, okay, is for this entire week, because I know I make this sound very, very simple, but this can be a lot more difficult for the average person, especially for somebody that just came into trading with us. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of homework, and then by next week, what I want you guys to do is know highs and lows, trend lines, support, and resistance. So that way, next week, we can start connecting support and resistance and trend lines and showing you guys how to take trades within the market, how to identify and signal market structure within the market. Okay? Very, very, very simple over here. So go look on different pairs. You guys can come back right to this pair as well, uh, GPB, CAD, or you guys can go to any currency pair that you guys love to trade. And what I want to see you guys do this whole entire week is make downtrends and make uptrends in the market and draw your support and resistance line. And I want you guys to see these little magical X's. See these little magical X's right here? X marks the spot. When you guys start to get really good at trading, all right, you guys are going to look for confluence points within the market. And confluence points is when price action overlaps. And it gives you a very strong indication of what's going to happen next. The more price action that overlaps, okay, the more, the, more, uh, uh, the more indication that you have that price is going to respect that particular zone. And I'll show you guys here quickly. We started to create a downtrend right here. Where price touched and pushed up and created the, the high, what I was looking for is for the next hit on this trend, if I was looking for a selling opportunity, right? So I want you guys, you guys can practice this on your demo account to see what trades, okay? This support became resistance. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the third hit on this trend right here. I'm looking for a selling opportunity. Remember, the trend is your friend. You guys want to trade with the trend. So if we're in a downtrend, we want to look for selling opportunities in the downtrend. So when the market broke out and found the next low point and retraced back up, what did it do? I'm looking for this magical X right here and it worked out so perfectly. Look how it whipped right at this entry area, which was the previous support, became the resistance, and it was also the top of the trend. I said, okay, this is a lot of confluence going on over here. This is a nice way to say that this is going to, it's going to respect the zone. I would have pulled in a selling opportunity, and that's where you would have seen price push away. That's why by every single one of these high points, you'll see that there's a strong push in price. A lot of retail traders are looking for selling opportunities. So everybody's shorting this pair right now. Everybody's cashing out and making money right at these low points eat the, eat coming the together. The All of, pardon me, guys. Okay. All right. So this is it here. Now, study this, guys. Study highs and lows. I want you to look over that for the whole entire week. I want you guys to get good at identifying highs and lows in the market and creating your downtrends by connecting lower highs and making your valleys and connecting your uptrends by creating the higher lows in the market. And you guys will slowly be able to see and understand market structure. Don't forget to mark up your support and your resistance so you can see your trading zone within the market. All right, guys, very, very, very simple. Week two, when we go over trading, um, week two, we're gonna go over price patterns. We're going to go over how to connect support and resistance, okay, and trend lines so that way you guys can create what's known as market entrapment and making um, what's known as price patterns in the market. And just to give you guys one sneak peek, look what happened over here. These lower lows started coming together 
and it started creating a wedge. This is known right here. This right here, this is known as a falling wedge, which is an indication that there's going to be a bullish move in the market. So this was our first, this was our, our, our first clue before market structure even broke. This was our first clue that the market was going to break out and we was going to start to be in an uptrend. And what we want to do is we want to show you guys how to get in early, how to get those sniper entries early on the trade. So I want you guys to come back with us next week. Make sure you guys know how to connect all your low and all your high points. That way you guys can start seeing market entrapment, support and resistance and trends. All right. So with that being said, guys, that's going to conclude our first lesson of the night. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the recording right now. And after I stop the recording, you guys are more than welcome to ask me any questions that you guys want to know here for the next, um, for the next 40 minutes. I'll stay on with you guys until 1130. So let me wrap this up and put this together. One second.